Hi, I'm Lindy. And I'm Marshall. Welcome to Tumble, the show where we explore stories of science discovery. Today is a Tumble Eclipse Spectacular. Oh, is this for the big eclipse that's passing over a good chunk of the U.S. on April 8th, 2024? I don't know anything about it. Yes, it is. We'll be getting ready with a special show about the total solar eclipse. The how, the why, and the feeling of seeing the moon block out the sun. It's going to be so fun. <laughs> good one. <laughs> All right, so what is going on in this tumble eclipse spectacular, as you're calling it, and why did you bring in this audience? <laughs> What's not going to happen is the question. We've got games, we've got music, and we've got a solar eclipse audio experience. Well, that's all intriguing. So um, I guess where do we start, and can we turn off the theme music? <laughs> yes. We're going to start by meeting our eclipse expert, Vivian White. I love solar eclipses. Vivian sounds like the perfect person for a solar spectacular because she sounds pretty spectacular. <laughs> Vivian's job is to explain what's happening in the sky to everyone who's curious about it. Now, I wonder how many times does she just say, that's a plane? <laughs> <laughs> She's focusing on astronomical events, things beyond our atmosphere. So typically she's talking about things you can see when it's night. But recently she's been focused on what's going to happen during a very special day. A lot of my work lately has been around solar eclipses and getting folks prepared for the April 8th total solar eclipse that's going to be passing through the U.S., the total eclipse moves along what's called the path of totality, a narrow band where you can see the moon completely block out the sun. That's where Vivian plans to be. I am really so excited about this upcoming eclipse. We're going to play some games with Vivian all about the solar eclipse. But first, let's get a sense of what a total solar eclipse is all about. Vivian's going to guide us through what she calls a full-body experience of the eclipse. So close your eyes and imagine. You've traveled to a point on the narrow band that arches across North America, from Austin, Texas to Burlington, Vermont. It's the day of the eclipse. You've been waiting, anticipating, and the moment has finally come. Vivian? You look up with your special eclipse glasses, your solar viewing glasses, and you notice that there is a what looks like a bite happening out of the sun. A little, the moon is passing in front of the sun from our perspective. So you notice that it starts to get covered up more and more and more. And as it does, the temperature starts to drop and you notice the light becoming a little bit almost metallic looking. It's a strange thing to describe, but there's a difference to the light that happens. And then as you get closer to the total eclipse, you notice the birds start singing and they're flying across the sky. They're all going home to roost because they think it's nighttime because they notice this difference in the light. And the bugs start making all sorts of noises like it's dusk. And then before you know it, you feel more than see this shadow that rushes up onto you faster than the speed of sound. And all of a sudden you look up and it's completely different. It is like twilight in every direction you see. And just where the sun was a moment ago that you couldn't see that was still too bright to look at with your eyes alone, you can at that one moment during an eclipse look up and you see this inky black hole in the sky where the sun just was and around it are these streamers coming out and you get this feeling of kind of oneness with the universe in a way that doesn't happen very often and it's fast it's only a few minutes and then all of a sudden the moon keeps moving and has uncovered the sun and you have to put your solar viewers back on so that you can see this little bitty crescent of sun that peeks out it is truly a, a full body experience when it's happening. So I got to say, 
I can't wait to see this. Now that you've had this full body experience, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with our Eclipse game show. Now that you know what it would be like to see a total solar eclipse, it's game show time. We've rounded up listeners as contestants, followed by a lightning round of eclipse trivia, all for you to play along with at home. Wow, I didn't know any of this was happening. This is awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, here's the rules for the first round. I asked some Tumble fans to send in their questions about the eclipse and what they think the answers are. If you're listening at home, you'll have the chance to come up with your own answer. Then Vivian's going to reveal what scientists have learned about the eclipse. Great. So uh, what's our first question? Our first question comes from Anaya. Why does the eclipse happen? That's, That's a great one. Why do we have eclipses? I always thought it was just a giant eating the sun a little bit and then... I don't know. Chomp, chomp. (laughs) Chomp, chomp. That's not what I really think, though. What is Anaya's answer? All right, listeners, what do you think? We've got a few moments to come up with your answer before we hear what Anaya says. I think the eclipse happens just because of the timing of how the moon is moving. I think scientists can find out by studying what the cycle of of the moon rotation and the earth rotation is. All right. So is Anaya right? I I think she might be. Anaya, you nailed it. The eclipses happen when a very special alignment takes place. So the moon goes around the earth about once a month and the earth goes around the sun about once a year. So... While the moon is going around the earth, we see different phases of the moon, and that's what that cycle is about. But every so often, and it's only about twice a year that it lines up just perfectly for the sun, the moon, and the earth to be directly in a line. All right, great job, Anaya. So solar eclipses happen when the sun, moon, and the earth are all like perfectly in a line with the moon between the earth and the sun. Yep. And that's a great lead-in to our next question from Florence. I would like to know why total eclipses are so rare. Why are total eclipses so rare? Maybe ponder that for a moment, listeners. So what does Vivian say? Great question. Funny enough, they are rare to see, But they're not rare to happen somewhere on Earth. Wait, so eclipses are not actually rare? Well, if you were listening closely to Vivian's last answer, you might have heard her say that the sun, moon, and Earth line up twice a year. And many of those are total. But the problem is the path that that shadow of a total solar eclipse takes is very narrow. So it only... It goes over a small part of the world. And often, because the world is covered in lots of water, it'll just be out in the ocean. And so not too many people get to see each of the solar eclipses. So it's just the whales that get to see those. (laughs) Yes, it's the other kind of whale watch, whales watching eclipses. (laughs) Do you think they're like, what was that? (laughs) Do they get freaked out about it? I don't know. It's hard to say. Another subject for another time. (laughs) All right, we have one last question, and it's from Avery. Why is it so dangerous to look at an eclipse? Yeah, I never really understood that. Why is it dangerous to look at an eclipse? All right, listeners, what do y'all think? I want to know. Here's what Avery thinks. Because it might hurt or ruin your eyesight. Okay, so is Avery correct? I mean, I imagine that's why you get those special glasses, so they don't destroy your eyesight. Yeah, great question. It's actually just dangerous to look at the sun. It has to do with um, all of the different rays that come from the sun, from the ultraviolet, like the stuff that gives us sunburn, to the infrared that is kind of the heat of the sun that can... All of those can do damage and lasting damage to our eyes. So when you look at the sun anytime, you want to use... 
not just regular sunglasses, but safe solar viewing glasses. And that goes for the eclipse too. Okay, so looking at the eclipse will hurt your eyes, and that's why we need to wear those cool glasses. Yes, but there is one exception. Only time you want to take those off during an eclipse is if you are on the path of totality and it gets totally dark because the moon totally covers the sun. Um, When the sun isn't visible because the moon's in front of it, then you can look with your eyes and not the glasses. But unless you're right on the path of totality, you'll never want to take your glasses off when you look at the sun. Well, that's really interesting. So you can only stare at the sun when the sun looks like it's not there, like it's completely covered up and the sky is black and it feels like the world's ending. (laughs) Which is what makes it so cool. (laughs) All right. Now it's time for our lightning eclipse round. And Marshall, can you read the questions? Just get more involved. (laughs) I did recently learn how to read. (laughs) I guess I can flex that skill now. Weird flex, but okay. (laughs) Okay, here we go. Question one. In what year will the solar eclipse be viewable again in the United States after April 8th? Is it A, 2100, B, 2030, or C, 2045? Once again, is it A, 2100, B, 2030, or C, 2045? The answer is C, 2045. It won't be until 2045 that we have another one coming across the U.S. That's 21 years away. How old will you be in 2045? I will be... I don't want to think about it. (laughs) (laughs) Of course, we know now that solar eclipses happen twice a year. Total solar eclipses, like the one on April 8th, happen every 18 months. So you can catch one earlier if you're willing to travel. Let's see. There's, um, there are quite a few coming up in Australia over the next decade. Time to plan your trip to Down Under, or maybe you're lucky enough to already be in Australia. Hello, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to go to Australia. And there's a group of people like Vivian called Eclipse Chasers who travel the world to make it to as many eclipses as they can. That seems like a pretty interesting way to see the world. All right, so here we are, our next question. Where did astronomers find what they believe is the first recorded evidence of an eclipse? Was it A, in ancient Egyptian texts, B, in ancient rock carvings in Ireland, or C, written on scrolls in China? Again, is it A, ancient Egyptian texts, B, ancient rock carvings in Ireland, or C, written on scrolls in China? Okay, the answer is none of the above. Not none of the above. Wait, what is this answer? Is this some kind of trick question? <laughs> it is kind of a trick question, but the reasons behind it are fascinating. Scientists are still debating which civilization was the first to record a solar eclipse. Vivian says we do know that ancient observers followed the sun closely and recorded when a solar eclipse happened. There's petroglyphs or rock carvings around the world that look like drawings of eclipses. But it wasn't until the 1700s that an astronomer named Edmund Haley predicted the exact time and location of a future solar eclipse. Now we can tell when eclipses happened for thousands of years in both the past and the future. Wow. <laughs> That's really so we can go back to like 4000 BC and know like oh there was an eclipse on April 7th. Exactly. Down to the exact day. It's really cool. That's amazing. All right. So I guess that brings us to our last question. Why do we live in the best time to see a total solar eclipse? Is it A because the moon will not always fit perfectly over the sun because it's getting smaller or something? Because we have really good snacks to eat while we wait for the eclipse, I think this is the right answer. (laughs) Or C, because the sun will soon tire of being overshadowed by the moon, even for just a few minutes. (laughs) Again, is it because the moon will not always fit? 
Is it B, because we have really good snacks? Or is it C, because the sun will soon tire of being overshadowed? Um, I hope everyone got this one. It's the snacks. Wait, no, it's A. It's A, because the moon will not always fit perfectly over the sun. Why is that? But the crazy thing is, the moon is moving farther away from the Earth each year. Not much, just a little about the um, speed of your fingernail growing, about three centimeters a year. But as it moves away, it's going to become... To us, it's going to look smaller in the sky, so it won't be able to cover the sun. Okay, so the moon's not actually getting smaller. It's just going to look smaller. Yes, but again, this is tens of thousands of years into the future. So future astronomers won't even get to see these solar eclipses in the same way that we do now, unless maybe they're, you know, out in space somewhere. We are very lucky to be living now for really a lot of reasons. So, but listeners... Did you have any luck on your answers on our quiz? Or maybe you already knew them and you didn't even need luck. (laughs) Either way, you've got some fun facts to wow your friends with on Eclipse Day. And we've got this Eclipse song for you. A total eclipse is when the moon moves in front of the sun. When the lines between the sun, moon, and earth become one. Rarely comes our way Where will you be When you can see totality A total eclipse of the sun La 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 A total eclipse of the sun La 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 A total eclipse of the sun Yes, a total eclipse Is when the moon moves in front of the sun When the lines between the sun, moon, and earth become one It's a special moment, they say How lucky are we, so amazing to see this reality A total eclipse of the sun, la 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 A total eclipse of the sun, la 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 total eclipse of the sun, la 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 A total eclipse of the sun There is so much more cool science to learn about the total solar eclipse, whether you're preparing to be on the path of totality or not. Think of the questions you still have about the eclipse after listening to the show. Now, with the help of an adult, research the answers. You can even make up your own game show to quiz your friends and family. It's so fun. (laughs) Nice catchphrase. (laughs) Well done. Thanks to Vivian White, Director of Free Choice Learning at the Astronomical Society of the Pacific in San Francisco, California. And a very special thanks to our awesome listeners who ask questions, Anaya, Florence, and Avery. Learn more from Vivian about the eclipse on our bonus interview episode available when you support us on Patreon for just $1 or more a month on patreon.com slash tumblepodcast. That's also where we asked listeners to submit questions for this episode. So if you'd like to be on the show, be sure to sign up. We have free resources to learn about the science of the eclipse and how to see it. That's on the blog on our website, sciencepodcastforkids.com. Sarah Robertson Lentz is our editor, and she designed the episode art. Elliot Hijaj is our production assistant. Gary Calhoun James engineered and mixed this episode. I'm Lindsay Patterson, and I wrote this episode. And I'm Marshall Escamilla, and I made all the music and sound design for this episode. The song A Total Eclipse of the Sun was written by me and Lindsay and performed by me. Tumble is a production of Tumble Media. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more stories of science discovery. 